All of the navigation calculations carried out on the wind face of your navigation computer are based on the triangle of velocities. Therefore, we begin our training on the use of the wind face by introducing you to the principle of the triangle of velocities. First of all, imagine a lake half a nautical mile wide. We are at position A and we have a boat with an outboard motor which has a speed of 5 knots. In 6 minutes, we'll have travelled across to position B. Now imagine that we are standing at position A, but this time the lake has become a river with a 5 knot current. If we threw a piece of wood into the river at position A, where would it finish up in 6 minutes? Half a nautical mile downstream at position C. Now, combine these two ideas. Imagine we set off from position A, point our boat in the direction of position B, but are swept downstream by the current. Remember, both the river and our boat are travelling at 5 nautical miles per hour. That's 5 knots. We'll finish up at position B1. Let's look at the boat's path again. After one and a half minutes, we'll be here. One eighth of a nautical mile across the river, one eighth of a nautical mile downstream. After three minutes, we're here. A quarter of a nautical mile across, and a quarter of a nautical mile downstream. After six minutes, we're here. Half a nautical mile across, and half a nautical mile downstream. Note that when it leaves point A, the boat sets off with its bow pointing directly towards B. But because the speed and direction of the water stream is superimposed on the speed and direction of the boat, its resultant track is about 45 degrees to a line joining A and B. The triangle ABB1 represents the geometry of the situation we've just described. We can also draw a triangle based purely on directions and speeds, as we will now show. The direction of the line XY represents the direction the boat is pointing in, that is, its heading. The length of the line XY represents 5 knots. You'll appreciate that it's very important to choose a practical, convenient scale to represent speed. For instance, you need to be able to draw the triangle on a conveniently sized sheet of paper. The choice of scale is yours. It might be 1 inch equals 1 knot, 1 centimeter equals 1 knot, or whatever. The main point is that, having chosen a scale, it must be used throughout the triangle of velocities calculation. The line YZ represents the direction and speed of the river. The direction of the line XZ represents the resultant track of the boat. Its length represents its speed along that track, in this case, 7 knots. Direction and speed together are known as velocity. The lines representing the individual velocities are known as vectors. An analogous situation occurs for an aircraft flying through the air because of the effects of the wind. We can measure the effect that wind has on the track and speed of an aircraft over the ground by constructing a triangle of velocities. Let's now look at this in more detail. The first side of the triangle of velocities is called the air vector. In our analogy, it's the line the aircraft will follow if it's flying in still air conditions. The air vector has a length which corresponds to the true airspeed, and it points in the direction in which the aircraft is heading. The second side is called the wind vector. The wind vector has a length which corresponds to the wind speed, and it points in the wind direction. The line joining these two vectors is the resultant vector, the ground vector. The ground vector has a scale length which corresponds to the ground speed, and it points in the direction of the track. The angle between the air vector, the direction in which our aircraft is heading, and the ground vector, the track the aircraft follows over the ground, is known as the drift angle or simply drift. Notice the arrowheads drawn on the vectors. 
One arrowhead indicates the air vector. Two arrowheads indicates the ground vector. And three indicates the wind vector. Here's an example of the triangle of velocities. Suppose that our heading is 0, 0, 0 degrees true, and we had a true airspeed of 100 knots. The wind is 240 degrees at 30 knots. Don't forget it's from 240 degrees. The orientation of the line that we draw to complete the triangle of velocities gives us the track we fly over the ground, that is 0, 1, 2 degrees true, which shows that our drift is 12 degrees starboard. The length of that line represents our ground speed of 118 knots. Taking matters one step further, you should now easily be able to deduce that if a pilot wishes to fly due north from A to B, at a true airspeed of 100 knots, with a prevailing wind from 240 degrees at 30 knots, the aircraft would have to head into wind to compensate for the drift. That situation is illustrated on your screen. The aircraft's ground speed would now be 112 knots. We must also bear in mind such matters as whether our compass directions are measured in degrees true or degrees magnetic. The usual convention is to calculate everything in degrees true and then to adjust for local magnetic variation once your calculation is finished. Always pay particular attention to this point. The wind face of the navigation computer enables us to solve triangle of velocities problems for navigational flight. The main components of this side of the computer are the rotating scale and window, the fixed drift scale, the index mark on the drift scale, the slide. The slide is two sided. One side gives a low speed range which goes up to 230 knots and the other a high speed range between 150 to 650 knots. There are three separate problems which can be solved on the wind face of the navigation computer. These are Given the wind and having determined our track and true airspeed Calculate the required heading and achieved ground speed. Knowing the wind, heading and true airspeed, calculate our achieved track and ground speed. Knowing our heading, true airspeed, track and ground speed, calculate the wind velocity. CPL and ATPL students need to be able to solve all three of these types of questions quickly and easily. In most problems that you solve on the wind face, you'll begin by marking the wind on the window of the rotating scale. Here's how this is done. Let's assume that we need to enter a wind from 360 degrees with a speed of 20 knots. Both these figures together give us the wind velocity, that is, its direction and speed. Set the wind direction on the rotating scale against the index mark. 360 degrees is shown on the scale as 0 degrees. Move the slide so that one of the thicker speed arcs is set under the small centre circle. Speed arcs are equidistant, so it doesn't matter which arc you use. 100 has been used here. Mark the cross on the centre line at a distance down from the centre circle, representing a wind speed of 20 knots, that is, on the 80 knot arc. For example, set a wind velocity of 040 degrees at 25 knots. This is a wind from 040 degrees at a wind speed of 25 knots. Set 040 on the rotating scale against the index mark. Set the center circle over a thick speed arc line. Place the cross over the 75 knot speed arc. 